Vever sent me out another product to review. This time it's a spring compressor kit, which is perfect because I want to replace my worn out spring insulator boots. This looks similar to the one in the TRD lowering spring instructions. Let's see how to operate it, except it's all in Polish, but I can get the gist of it here. We can see the range of the three yokes. This basically says the spring compressor is a special tool for removing springs, and the diagram to the right of the bottom line shows you shouldn't use an impact gun. I'll put a link to the English instructions in the video description below, but they're not much better. But don't worry, as I'll go over how to use it in this video. This is the compression rod assembly. It feels very heavy duty, and almost weighs as much as the strut assembly. Here's the largest yoke. This yellow plastic wasn't in the original listing pictures, but it's a nice addition. This bag, whoops, has five socket cap bolts and a hex key. And this is an extension if you have a very tapered spring. If you've ever rented a spring compressor from the auto store, you probably got one like this. You have to make sure they sit securely opposite from each other when attaching them. The main issue is that as you compress them, the thread may hit the bottom of the strut on either side, and that makes positioning them so they're safe and stable very difficult. Just for the purposes of filming this video, I have the screw assembly clamped to my table vise. You can see the boot is torn up and falling apart over here. It actually took me a bit to find the replacement part, because while it's a strut boot, it's also a spring insulator, and that's what it's listed as. Since this spring has a slight taper to it, I'm going to use this medium 110 to 150 millimeter range yoke for the upper coil, and the larger 140 to 195 millimeter range yoke for the lower coil. Let's take it, line it up with the threaded hole in the bottom mount on the compression rod, then secure it with a bolt, and then tighten it with a hex key. I can only do half a turn at a time because the key hits the rod, so I'm going to use my ball ended hex key to tighten it instead. Before I do the other one, let's look at the smaller 80 to 115 millimeter range yoke. If you have a very tapered spring, you'll want to use the extension piece to help push the yoke out so that you can keep the spring parallel to the spring compressor. Take the end with the narrower edge and bolt it onto the compression rod. Then take the small yoke and bolt it onto the extension. You can see how the extension would help keep the spring parallel to the compressor. Let me take this off so I can put the medium yoke that I need on here instead. I've sized this up so the spring will fit inside. I just need to hand tighten it enough to secure it and then we'll head outside. I've already done one strut, and you can see how torn up the boot is. Let's get my safety glasses back on, and we'll do the other. All that's needed is a 21mm socket and wrench. The original instructions say don't use an impact gun. As I'm tightening it down, I want to make sure the spring is properly seated. I would normally speed up the video for this part, but I want to give you a good idea of how quick and easy this process is. Now we can use my impact gun with a 19mm socket to remove the nut. Keep your hands clear of the top hat when doing this. When disassembling your own strut, be sure to always keep your face and body away from the top and bottom of the spring in case something happens. Yep, that's definitely trash. I'll get the rest of it out, wipe off any excess dirt, and then swap in the new one. While decompressing, make sure the bottom rubber isolator and the spring stay properly seated.
let's get this off of here, and then I'll tighten the nut down to at least 20 foot-pounds before I put the struts back in storage. Whenever I decide to reinstall them on the car, and they have some weight on them, I'll need to tighten those nuts down to 35 foot-pounds. This entire process was so much faster using this new spring compressor, literally only taking a few minutes to compress and decompress. I'll put a link to it in the video description below. Thank you, Vever, for sending it out for me to review, and to my viewers out there, if you haven't hit subscribe to my channel yet, please do so now, and as always, thank you for watching.